What's up, my devil? Sensei Tunum here with another video for you. So, took last week off, you know, summer, traveling, you know how things go. But I'm back, ready to hit it hard. Hopefully, I'll get another video out before next Thursday. Definitely by then. I'm going to try to get more than one video per week. I'm motivated to do content. But you got to let me know you want to see it. Like, comment. Let me know that you like to see it. But the likes and the big one is if you like these videos and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button because that's how I know that you guys want to see this stuff and i want to do it so hopefully you want to see it um this week we're going to talk again about the es we're going to talk about three charts the es bitcoin of course and the 10-year bond yields and the reason that i keep you guys up to date on sort of the big signpost charts in the traditionals is not just because as a trader as an investor you should be trading and investing in those markets which you should but because I know that my base, you guys are interested in crypto and these things really do affect what's going on over there in the Bitcoin crypto world. And of course, Bitcoin, if it's affecting Bitcoin, it's affecting all your favorite shit coins too. Don't mean that derogatorily towards anything that's not Bitcoin, but you know, been around long enough that anything to me, you call it shit coin. I love the shit coins. Don't worry. Great projects. Some shit ones. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah and of course we've got sam over at trade devils doing the bitcoin friday every friday for you so if he's going to keep you up to date there i'm going to keep you up to date here and it's very important but we're going to of course talk about bitcoin too just a little bit not as in depth he'll hit you with that tomorrow on friday um so yeah let's just go ahead and get right in we'll do a recap of where we've gotten to and we've actually got some pretty pretty interesting stuff that uh to update on this week so stay tuned um basically to recap we have decided that we have a three swing structure finish to this location could have been here but we had very atypical price action which i think i mentioned before would just generally tells you that you have a lack of resolution and now we're starting to see that we have potentially resolved here right so if this had been an x wave if we were to say put in a finish a y here put in a triple it would have been a very, very atypical X, very small, not much magnitude. Um, and of course, rules and guidelines of this theory are just that rules and guidelines of a fractal TA theory. You know, they're not laws of nature, despite Elliot's uh, book, which is terrific. Read it several times, reading it again. He, you know, that dude, smart man. So <laughs> like to read his stuff. Um, anyway, not laws of nature. So you don't necessarily always adhere to them but if you if you take a strong stance against the theory if you understand it most people don't and then you go bet against it uh outside of those probable expectations you're usually going to kick yourself so now i think we can say that we have a decently fairly resolved y to this point we weren't sure last week if the y was here tiny x here a p c coming down which wouldn't make sense because I'd be short just in the magnitude that we've had. So things are starting to make a lot more sense now. And we'll get to it. But I think that, again, the subwave structure, again, meaning I told you guys before last week, the subwave structure within these is not beautiful, right? But what we can say is that we have three dominant swings, right? Three dominant swings. And internal to each of those three dominant swings are three, and then, of course, three in the reactive, three more dominant swings, we, we can say that with confidence, right? But we can't say with confidence that the subwave structure of these is pretty, right? That we can go all the way down to the one second and just have that perfect, perfect count. And you rarely can. You'd like to have it. And with the more confluences and uh, prob probable scenarios that you hit, the higher confidence you can have in your, you know, projections, right? Um, but reality is reality. This is what we've got. So we you know we don't feel super strongly just based on the chart that the bottom is either in or not in because we are saying that we have a co finish corrective to this point which if the bottom is not in we are then and i said this last week or two weeks ago projecting to put in a triple zigzag and a triple zigzag is just a very uncommon structure they happen don't get me wrong but i would even characterize it as ewi uh the book that everyone knows uh, on Elliott wave would characterize them as very rare and they definitely happen but i can sit here and zoom out on this chart and find thousands of zigzags easily 
hundreds of um, double zigzags easily. Triple zigzags, they're a lot harder to find. So when you start projecting for these highly unlikely patterns, you got to start to question yourself. So while we, you know, think contextually, not just with Elliot, that the bottom is not in, I think that uh, you have to, in order to have a count that you feel any good about, you got to sort of have to project for one of these lower expect expected counts. That way, that means that you should be very aware of the possibility that it is wrong. And if it's wrong, what is it? It means that you have a finish corrected to this point and that we are going to continue a motive to the upside, right? That's sort of the way to use this theory. Um, know how you're wrong and if you're wrong, why you're wrong, etc. cetera. Um, and, you know, try to take advantages of where both of those two different scenarios or however many you have, have con a congruent price direction at the same time that that is what leads to your super probable trades right because if you're wrong you're right so tangent on that complete <laughs> all right so if we have the three i said that you know last week we were saying that we didn't it just didn't feel resolved really for bulls they needed to get back inside of this channel which they did and then they while i was gone yeah they got in got back out and now they're in again but if they wanted to have any hope that he had to get back in there, first things first. Um, and I also happen to show you guys a little tr pattern that I like to trade. Even though it wasn't... Oops. That's not what we want. Way too far. Just showed a little pattern here. Something like this. Something like this. And I left that on the chart. I told you guys that I typically like to trade these, you know, sort of earlier on in corrections or in um, trends that have sort of established themselves. This was quite early, but um, a pattern to trade is just a breakout of this. And we had that, of course, and those are typically hard to project, you know, just based on that. You got to use other things. But if you did just use this, typically I'd probably be out around the resistance, which this channel is proven to be semi resistance right semi support and resistance um it's definitely an important level in the market as you see right um and this has been on the chart for quite some time but it doesn't exactly act as a brick wall um so it did break out it would have been a good trade of course came back down so just wanted to point that out before continuing on about where we're going okay so we have returned this would have been an improbable X to finish the Y here. And if that would have happened and you're still going down, it would have been another, you know, three wave move, which that would have been, you know, a tiny three wave move relative to like this one or even, you know, kind of similar to that, but not really. Again, this was, you know, just tough to count. Right. So that's why I'm happy to just take dominant swings at this moment and move along with that as the primary and we can use other markets like the TNX, the bond, where the smart money is, they say. The bond market is the smart money. Um, and use those tips of what's going on there to sort of point us in the direction of where we might go with this. And then, of course, that means with Bitcoin. Um, so, again, because we don't have a highly probable, you always want both sides. But with just this chart, it's not that far off 50 50 it really isn't but we have shown the weakness of breaking down even if we're turning in it's shown that we can this market can tend to be weak so you know and that and the context i'm going to give you from the tnx continues to be the primary continues to be that we will not be complete to the downside however i now do think we will sustain this rally for you know a decent bit more maybe not a ton but a decent bit and we'll get that into a second uh let's if this is the count, what would we expect then at this point? We would expect an X wave that will break this channel. This is, so if we're gonna put, do something like that, change the color here, we'll go green, just to set it, make it pop. Um, an X wave that will break the zigzag of the previous zigzag within the pattern. And then you put an X and another similar magnitude uh, Z wave at that point. So we did have what appears to be more of a three wave move off this low. Let's go ahead and get down the 15 minute. So the low is here. 
kind of ugly, but you know, you could say, I won't even put the labels. The Elliott Wave, for Elliott Wave labels for Trading View now are just so blech. Anyway, so we say that's a three wave move. One, two, three, four, five. And then correction, one, two, or maybe even correction ends here. One, two, three, four, five, something. And probably be one, two, one, two, three, four, five, three, four, five. Anyway, three swings. <laughs> Impulsive. Pretty ugly. That one's not an impulse. Can't even call it a diag. So, anyway, three way, three swing move. This is why I don't get, you know, this is just how I do it. I don't get too caught up in the minutia, especially when it's back here. And I don't need to. Um, because not only, you know, you could have said it was in at that point. Oops. Wrong screen. There we go. Uh, we could have said it was in at that point, And that would, would be where we were sort of going back and forth between is the Y here, is the Y over there. Um, and I think with the PA that we've had thus far, nothing is, nothing is confirmed. Of course we could have, you know, it could be the, where the Y is over here and we're going to put that smaller zigzag ABC that I showed before. And this is just a, you know, this is just a one and we're putting a really deep two over here, right? Uh, that could be a thing. So even for this count, it's not really not really strong until it breaks there this top but when it does look what it's going to be coming up against that channel so if it breaks this it sort of confirms that it could be an adequate x wave but you would think it would continue on further to generally a one-to-one -one relationship so not much further um if we zoom out even more what we can see is go back to four hours is that when we came up and reversed, we got to the higher, well, it's not a high relative to everything else, but we came from, you know, this is the VPVR tool. Um, I talk about it all the time. I don't wanna get in too much depth now. We're already 12 minutes in, but we came to a area of price acceptance, right? And then right when you're trying to get out of that area of price acceptance, this is an area of price, you know, price un not being accepted, rejection. Um, it does reject, you know, the and either the way this works is you'll often either get right through these or they'll turn you around. So we turned around and now we've come back retested. We're still on that high area of price expectation. I'm thinking what may happen. Here's that one to one right up to that through that area of low volume right up to this area of price ex, um, acceptance. So one to one here, you know, we got a little more room up to there, uh, up to this bigger volume node um and of course we have the median that has shown itself to be important in the market coming down from this channel uh to act as resistance should we get past that um yeah and then we would have an adequate at that point we'll get rid of this see i don't even keep i don't even keep the triple zigzag on the favorites bar for i mean it's not me trying to like insert my will in the markets it's just it's just what it is then we can get our X completed similar magnitude Z wave. And we'll just go ahead and project the one-to-one -one off of the proposed Y from, and we'll just use the one-to-one -one as a general rough guideline. That takes us down right around 3000 S and P. And like I said, should we break out of here and sustain, which we kind of have, we're fucking about, but, and I, the primary expectation as, as, lightly tilted in that favor as we are the primary expectation is that the bottom isn't in even if we do sustain a rally for a bit longer um and then the zoom out further is that we would probably the original expectation was you know sort of double the length of this wave before we did that now it would not be necessarily double all of this it's not too far off but doubling all of that would bring us from there to our proposed end, that'd bring us down to the 2800-ish, 2850-ish level. I don't think we get that low, to be honest. This this POC point of control of the VPVR, right in all of this strong support area. I think that would probably be sort of 3000-ish maximum terminal. 
I mean, we get down here, Fed might even start easing, right? Um, so, um, maybe it depends on how fast it happens, but uh, it doesn't look like it's going to happen tomorrow. So, I do think that we still get, you know, out back down to around this area. Those are just based on probable expectation. But as you see, we don't always get probable, right? So, we'll just have to see as it plays and project as we go. And we'll update accordingly, continue to update accordingly. Oops, I got rid of the... I got rid of the triple zigzag and I'll just go back to the favorites bar, put the Y there. Because of course, if we're wrong and we really, you know, a lot of times with Elliot, you can all you can find yourself looking for one more leg, one more leg. And in a case like this, the count doesn't even necessarily scream it because the triple zigzag is, you know, like I say, it's a rare formation. You see it completed double, it's sort of a good position to call it maybe for a potential bottom, but contextually we have some other things going on. Uh, but yeah, that's where we're at with the count. So at this point, my primary expectation is to get outside of this. We don't even need to use this channel because we could say outside of this pitchfork parallel drawn from the top. And then these two dominant swings. One, two, three. Outside of this pitchfork parallel, round that one to one. Maybe it's up to that channel median. So maybe up to the, we'll say, 4,000 to 4,150. Something like that. Before then, we would turn over. Now we start getting much greatly beyond that. Let's see, where would we start to think that we're gonna change? Well, I can tell you the first place I'm gonna start to think the change is if this relationship, instead of being one-to-one, -one, it turns out to be more of an extension type of relationship and gets to and even through the wave three probable expectation, which happens to be right in the golden corner pocket. So then even if it turns out there, then you're wondering, mm, turn around in the golden corner pocket, but it was wave three type of relationship. Mm, is that going to turn it down? So there's always, we're always moving through the fog, just looking for openings to help us get our signposts and guide our way home, right? Um, and we just have to keep an eye out, see where we go. So it can always get tricky. But when we, if we do get beyond that one-to-one -one relationship, more into that extended territory for this wave, then I might really start to consider, oh, bottom might be in. But let's go ahead and look at the bond market, which is, again, the smart money, they say. Um, this one is like keep to up to date. I don't know where the larger went. We showed a larger one to here. So this is, I mean, I've been updating the guys on this for quite a long time. And the guys, I mean, the Discord, uh, you know, TradeDevils.com, TradeDevils University. Um, but there's bigger two here. We won't talk about that. But there's another one that we've been updating that this could be. This is something to talk about. Okay. So we were looking for this top. I don't know that well, if I talked about it publicly, but I've been looking for this top to happen. Did happen. And it's played out. I mean, just this is just beautiful perfect Elliot and it's so hard to get it but it's just beautiful perfect Elliot to this point um, not without confusion of course because we have perfect wave relation well I say perfect people use Fibonacci's and they expect it to be like when you're using it for algos it's one thing but when you're using it for other things I always it's more of a rough guideline right so anyway we have a very nicely close to 1618 relationship wave 3 to wave 1 then we retraced to the high probable area of between the two three six and the three eight two, uh, not to the not quite to the three eight two, so that's pretty darn shallow. And then the wave five extended darn near perfectly. Length of the one from the four, one to one. This is this is perfect. Elliot channeled very nicely. Now, at that point we could call a top. And this is one of the strongest parts of the theory that nobody understands is they try people try to use this theory the wrong way so much, but the most powerful point of this theory is to be able to see when something is resolved. Like like this why. If you, you know, this one wasn't the best cuz there was so much uncertainty within, but like that the why is completed here. Because that it is, then we would expect to get such a, you know, a uh, corrective at the very least of a certain magnitude right so you can make decisions based on i see this is finished so you know whether or not i've and it maybe you don't maybe you're even wrong about what it finished but that you can see something finished that is what is so strong about this through bitcoin and we're gonna go back to that in a minute um anyway now we have broken out of the final channel of that wave three to say that we have formed what would be you know, an adequate retracement. You gotta at least break out of that to um, 
form an adequate retracement. Oh, and then look at this. Two similar magnitude motive structures. One to one, almost to the tick. Oops. What did I do? One to one, almost to the tick, the channel perfectly. So what we have here, and then now we've been correcting off of today. So we're not identifying that in real time necessarily is a completed zigzag perfect spot to long because you got the one-to-one -one, you got the channel if it breaks out then you're probably wrong so it's like a binary type of entry that's how you trade this theory boys anyway um but the question now becomes just because you see a completed zigzag is again if let's say your primary expectation was okay four in well that correction could get more complex so that's sort of what i was alluding to earlier with um seeing something's complete and you might be wrong about it what's completed anyway why i mentioned that now is that this two wave this is a sharp corrective and we typically expect to observe alternation when in in these markets to where we would expect to see a sharp and then this to be sideways and even this wave four of one lesser degree oh by the way ended right at the terminal of wave four of one lesser degree so not not that doesn't necessarily give you an indication of all oh, the four is complete because um also something that people don't talk about enough is that the if it were to be a sideways style correction which you often see in wave fours especially when wave two is sharp the first leg of that corrective is generally sharp and scary like this one and sets the depth of the entire correction and that's why it's called sideways because then it goes all the way up here and then all the way back down here and doesn't go external to that first move so but we set it perfectly now sharp 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 that's weird you know but with the state of markets you know i could see alternation is it's pretty darn reliable it used to be called the rule of alternation i guess it still is called the rule but it's not considered a rule <laughs> it's weird to me that it's not because it's pretty strong but you know you do see times when it's not observed but because we haven't seen this be sideways and this sharp sharp you kind of want to expect to see a sideways now the only problem with that is the magnitude of this is already bigger than this too and you wouldn't expect this you know sister wave to this wave to get a huge magnitude sideways relative to this and you know these do tend to get bigger um but uh maybe just maybe it is in which would mean even if it's not it's still potentially set the depth right so that means that whether we're sideways here for a while before we go up or we're going up now that this bull market in the in the yields so bear market in the bonds is going to continue and again this is the smart money and this is clean ass elliot and what 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 has this been doing all year it's been going up what, is, what have stocks been doing all year they've been going down so I would think that you could say that there's an inverse correlation in this relationship at the moment, at least. So if this is this is the smart money and this is clean ass Elliot and this isn't clean and this is showing that, hey, maybe we're going to fuck around a bit and then go up. Maybe we're going to fuck around a bit and then go down. And that means that if this is correlated to Bitcoin, which Bitcoin is going up with it right now, Bitcoin should follow potentially. But the Bitcoin count's getting weird, right? So this has been the count that we've been rolling with and just put up some potential, let's say, tree branches to hit on the way down. Don't necessarily have to be the low, really. The, the expected, you know, if you're just going to pull a zero through three from four for a, we'll just pull it, a zero through three from four, wherever that may end. Let's say it is here for a 618 that's one way to project for a fifth which in this instance because of the overextended three which somebody tried to say that's a really extended three trying to to me trying to i don't know what that was trying to insinuate it is you're right but three is the most often extended wave so if it gets really extended i i don't i honestly don't know what he was talking about but because yeah, there's times when you can say oh that's a shallow two and it kind of makes more sense to me why you would say that i don't understand the that's a really extended three comment anyway if you're watching this, whoever said that to me, I don't recall exactly. I don't know. You can explain it to me better. Um, in any event, um, so let's just say it ends there. 
just based on, you know, and there's so much more that goes into this area than just projecting with fibs. That's taking it down like the 13, 7, 14, 14 area. And of course, you have these other important areas there. But just like maybe the bottom's in here, maybe the bottom's in here. I don't see anything that necessarily is a strong indication of that. There was a point when this was looking like, oh, maybe it's a triangle in play. Now it's pretty much that's 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 out of the equation now. So at this point, you're sort of expecting that you would project one to one on here, which is too, too much further. Almost there. In fact, got close to it and starting to die off. Now we're getting volume. This is nice to get volume here, except for the, you know, people see volume like, oh, it's going to go. Volume just means that the auction process is active. And that means that there's... Think about... I use a lot more things than just Elliot, but I talk about Elliot in these videos. That's what I'm the certified expert in, right? Uh, but let's just say that thinking about the auction process in technical analysis is a smart thing to do um, because you can get an idea of the why the volume is doing what it's doing that's not necessarily an elliot look but volume is important to elliot but you can look at it much more in depth but the fact that we are getting this high volume sort of as we broke out of here which was an area of resistance is that people are starting to disagree right that uh, there's price content contest being contested you know when it's down in here and it's low volume people think it's fairly priced they're like you know they're not necessarily oh you know i don't want to pay what it's worth so i'm not bidding for it long and i don't want to short it because you know again it's what it's worth now it's going up there's people on the bull side that are getting excited oh it's going to keep going up i want to bid and then the bears are like oh now now it's overpriced now i want to sell or you know the people are just trying to get out of it um so don't don't you got to think more dynamically about volume than you might be if you if you only think this is bullish because this could definitely have bearish implications and i think it kind of probably does in this instance um should this obviously just like on the other chart <laughs> if this goes and starts hitting uh, extended wave territory on extended volume then you start to change your mind then you start to look at other options not necessarily that the bottom is 100 percent in but that it has a much greater possibility to be so. I do think that we're getting into the area of a turn in here. You don't want this four to get too much more further out because this two is already, you know, not huge relative relationship wise magnitude. Fours can get bigger. You'll see the four. It's more likely for the four to get big to its parent, its sibling wave than the two. It does happen sometimes with the two as well, uh, but you see with the four more often really really though you you almost always see similar magnitude so we don't want to get too much further out than this um certainly an adequate four so that's where we're at with that and shin of course when the four is in then you go down towards these five levels that i was talking about previously so i tried to talk as fast as i could to get through this video and i still almost made it 30 minutes so really guys let me know if you like it if you do hey if you stay to the end put a comment in the bottom let me know because i feel like most people don't and uh do, going this long is a waste but if you if you could keep up with the uh jibber jabber and tangents i love you thanks for being here like subscribe i'm trying to i'm trying to get this thing going so um i need you guys to help because i want to do this together all right guys toot out